the hammers for the piano. Oh, that's right. We ordered those last week. So those parts usually come in on Wednesdays. Excuse me, but I'm really in a rush. Well, so is everybody. I'd like to buy a piano. Just wait your turn, sir. Um, just let me get a piece of paper here. Mr. Coase, now, did you say you had a telephone? Uh, yeah, I had uh, access to one. Can you be reached there? Yeah, I'm afraid I can most of the day. What's the number, please? Didn't you want this one here? No, I don't think so. I like this one. It reminds me of something. It's more expensive, sir. It's okay? You should hear from us soon. Uh, I think so. I'm going to call you, Mr. Grant, to make sure someone's home before we deliver. No, don't call. It's got to be a surprise. When I reread the things I've written her, it sounds like someone talking to himself. And it occurs to me that even my memory is self-conscious. There must be a more positive way to remember things, even if the events themselves make me bristle. I want to recall exteriors, graffiti on the sides of school buses, misprints in the newspaper, the way a girl's shirt tail hangs down over or behind. It seems very important that I be able to remember the things that aren't around all the time, real colors and real conversations. What I've just read here are the things that never leave me, the colors of my own moods, my own endless dialogues. For example, a little girl in the park, she stopped me, she startled me. She asked me for money and I, I gave it to her. She was remarkable. But all that is recounted in these pages, the overwhelming silliness that I felt I had no reason to feel to begin with. My powers of observation are in there somewhere, going to waste. I know they're in there because I can see them. I've looked inside myself so many times. I'm gonna stop going to the movies and start practicing more. Movies do that to you. They surround you with whatever it is you need to feel, and you feel it. You watch yourself up there. Movies go on inside you. Music is much tougher. You're inside of it. You have to know it. Then if you want it bad enough, you drag it in. WBJWFM, good evening. Charlie. Oh, now look, you haven't stumped me for a long time. Go ahead. Uh huh. The movie you're thinking about is Five Easy Pieces starring Jack Nicholson. Yeah. But now listen, Charlie, I got one for you. The actress that played Jack Nicholson's sister in that film, I, I can't remember her name, she, uh, she made her debut in a film made in 1955 and she played a hooker. Yeah, see if you can come up with that flip. Okay, Charlie. You think about it and call me back, all right? I'll be here. Okay. Goodbye. WBJWFM, good evening. Oh, hi, Jane. Oh, I haven't forgotten. Look, not only have I not forgotten our tennis date, but I even remembered your birthday. Well, as a matter of fact, I am pretty proud of that. Oh, yeah, you always say that, and as soon as the game's over, you've got a thousand excuses, I know. <laughs> oh, come on, quit pouting. I'll be home after the show. Come on, Jane, not again. Listen, I can't listen to that now. But look, I'll be home after the show, not again. Come on, Jane, look, I'll be home later. I gotta go, Jane. I've gotta get off. Listen, I'll see you later. All right. Goodbye. Christ. That was the Chopin Prelude in E minor, Opus 28, Glenn Gould, pianist, a Dorsha gramophone stereo recording. You're listening to Modulations, a nightly feature here on WBJWFM with your host, Ben Grant. We'll return to our program tonight featuring the music of Liszt and Chopin after the following commercial announcements.
Happy birthday, honey. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, is it your birthday or isn't it? I mean, happy birthday is happy birthday, for Christ's sake. You want me to believe you let me win. Don't you? I can't believe it. I can't believe you, Ben. What is your problem? Jane, you go ahead and think whatever you want. You celebrate your birthday the way you want to, and I'll celebrate the way I want. Well, that's real generous of you, Ben. Thanks. How much more out of your way are you going to go to make me feel happy, huh? After all, it is my birthday. You should condescend to me. Make me feel important. I've got this brand new piano that no one knows how to play. It goes right along with our brand new house in a neighborhood where no one knows how to find us. And a new husband who all of a sudden won't speak to me unless it's to make me feel like I'm intruding on his privacy. Ben, you know, you really ought to be very happy. You've got a great job, a great future, and a goddamn great wife. I want to know what's going on with you. What's going on with me? What the hell's going on with you? You win one lousy little tennis game, and all of a sudden you're figuring out that my life's falling apart. You want to know why I got that piano? Because you're always telling me that you don't have anything to do, that you don't know anybody, that all you do every night is sit around and watch television and wait for me to come home and rescue you. So learn to play the piano. It would really make me happy if I came home one night and you were a fucking virtuoso. I can't live my life and yours too, Jane. I just can't do that. You have more space? Yes. Then do I it would. every week? Uh, from where I sit now in life, I think more special is better. Can you tell me why you thought you had to let me win this afternoon? I mean... I'm still like thinking about that. <laughs> well, why shouldn't I? Well, it was a childish thing to do. It insulted me. I thought you were convinced I didn't let you win anyway. Maybe we could. Well, did you? Well, would you be insulted either way? If I let you win, then I was condescending. If I didn't, then I was lying. I'll tell you what, Jane, you just choose the way that bothers you the least. It doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. and when you get... At least I'd know what to be angry at you for. Look, Jane, if it'll help you get to sleep, then you won fair and square. I tried my best and you won. Cancel the weekly series. Let him... All right, she doesn't want to do it. No, you don't want to do it. Are you seeing someone? I know, it's double. Look at this. I wish I had these in school. I would have had an excuse for failing. <laughs> the piano we got was a display fail? model. It saved us a few bucks, but the salesman said it's been sitting around a good while. It, it probably needs tune. So, uh, look, I gotta go talk to Bernie in the morning. I want you to call the piano tuner, okay? Benjamin, I don't even know how to play chopsticks. What difference does it make if the piano's in tune? Well, we've got the piano. It might as well be in tune. Maybe somebody will come over that knows how to play it. I think it's brilliant. You see, it depends on... I gave him the number at the place I got the thing. My side. I'll leave it for you in the morning. I think it's the side of the house. That's it. That's your mark. Whatever the adhesive tape is, he's only going to get nice, pretty pictures. You're pretty Hello? ready. Hello? Yep. You know how this part goes? Oh, uh, I don't know. Hold on a second. Are you Paul Coombs? Phone's for you. Were you sleeping? Uh -huh. Hello? Hello? Sure is for me. There's nobody on the line. Of course I am. What do you mean? I didn't mean that. I, I get these phone calls. There's no one on the line. Whoever this comes in. Whoever it was had a woman's voice. A woman? Yeah, is that so unusual? So you're a piano tuner, huh? Yeah, that's right. How'd you know? Well, whoever it was on the phone asked for Mr. Paul Coombs, the piano tuner. Oh, by the way, my name is Claudia. Oh, hello. I live here now. We're neighbors. Yeah, good. Is it okay if I call you Paul? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, Paul, I was just about to have my breakfast. Would you care to join me? Uh, no thanks. No, I... Oh, come on. I really hate to eat alone. Uh, let, me, let me put on a shirt, okay? Nope. If you don't get dressed, then I don't feel like I have to. You have your own business, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Ben, can I talk to you for a second, please? Yeah.
Sit down. I want you to know, Ben, in no uncertain terms, that things aren't as golden around here for you as you think. People are getting mad at you around here. Now, we all know your hotshot reputation. We all know the networks are after you and that you're on your way up. But nobody likes a prima donna, Ben, and you're really acting the part. Bernie, you're my boss, not my brother. You're not even my friend. Now, what is this horse shit? Are you going to fire me because I got a swelled head? No, but let's say I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt and thinking it's the laurels you're resting on responsible for those 40 seconds of dead air on modulations last week. For you're missing seven IDs in the last 10 days. For not cooperating with the sound engineer, the new guy. What's his name? No, Ben. He came to me with all sorts of complaints about you, Ben. You're talking right through the cues you gave him. You're screwing up into your commercial time. Simple little things, Ben, that you've known since you were a little kid. Since you've been doing them for years. You gotta take it easy on him, Ben. He's a new guy. He doesn't know your reputation yet. You done? No, not quite. I wanna know what's bugging you. Come on, Ben, I'm not as hard a guy as you think I am. I can tell when somebody's got a bug up his ass. Ben, you're my best man. If you're having trouble, I want to know about it. Is Janie giving you a hard time? If you want some time off to fix it up, for Christ's sakes, ask me. Bernie, listen, I don't know what it is all of a sudden that's got everybody thinking my life is cockeyed. Janie wants to know if I'm having trouble at the station. If I'm not getting along with you, you want to know if I'm not getting along with Janie? You gave me fair warning. It won't happen again. But look, Bernie, I want you to lay off with that other stuff. You want to know what's the matter with me? You want to know what's bothering me? What's bugging me is people trying to figure out what's bugging me. Now look, I want you to lay off. Just do me that favor, will you? Everything is peachy. So just lay off. And look, don't think that you're telling me something that I don't already know. Bernie, phone. Yeah. Yeah, hi, Charlie. What is it? No, no, he's not here. He just left. Yeah, hold on. Hold on one second. I'll tell him. East of Eden, you said? Ilya Kazan. Hold on. What was that girl's name again? Lois Smith. Yeah, I got it, Charlie. Yeah, I'll tell him. I'll tell him. So long. Yeah, thanks. Your secretary's not very efficient. I don't have a secretary. Oh, then who answered the phone? Mm, mostly I do it myself. Well, some girl answered the morning I called you. Oh, that uh, must be that girl down the hall. I don't have a phone in the uh, like phone I use. I want you to sell the hall there. Well, she's not very efficient. She hung up on me. Well, I don't know her too well, but uh, I think you got her out of bed. You know, I uh, heard you humming a tune in the kitchen there a little while ago. Uh, I bet you could learn to play piano if you'd like. Oh, no, I couldn't. You don't know me. I... Let me see your hands. Why? Come here. We'll go to your fingers. We'll go to your fingers. What for? Well, your hands aren't a bit small. No, <laughs> we'd both be too frustrated. Look, I, uh, let me put it this way. I, I never taught before. I, you've never learned. I, I, won't, I won't charge you anything. I think it'd be fun. What do you say? Okay. Good.
I had another lesson with Paul today. He's really a marvelous teacher. He says I make him look good. He's never taught before, and uh, he's really doing a good job. He's very natural. You should hear him play. Ben? Mm. Jane, I, I'm really sorry about dinner. I don't know where my mind is. It's all right. Dinner can wait. You, uh, you any good at that thing? Well, I'm no virtuoso. But Paul seems to think I'm doing all right. He says I'm very natural for a beginner. Very relaxed. You know, Ben, you really ought to meet him. He's a lot like you when you're on the air. I bet he's as stubborn as you are. The carpet was green. I remember that because the bed was only a mattress on the floor and we were so close to the carpet. The mattress was small, my head kept hanging over it. I found myself staring inside the green at the stale yellow of corn chip crumbs. I remember she was condescending. It never occurred to her, I don't think, that I might have known what I was doing. What never occurred to me was that she might ask me for money. I remember exactly what she said. She was lying on her back, smoking a cigarette with a smug look. And she said, you know, Paul, I don't think I can scrape up the rent this month. I don't have a job yet. It's due in a few days, isn't it? And for some reason, I knew exactly what she was getting at, which I realized right away is not the kind of perception I'm usually good at. But I said, Claudia, you could have just asked me for the money. And she looked a little hurt, but she said, well, we can do this again, you know. I thought all morning about the little girl in the park. The first time she looked up at me and asked me for money, I thought she was kidding. Then I finally gave her some because she wouldn't leave me alone. And I wanted to be alone. She looked at the quarter I gave her and hissed at me, miser. I remember all that morning, how angry a face that little girl had when she called me that. And so in the afternoon, I slid a check for the rent under Claudia's door. Claudia barely smiles at me anymore, but I think she knows she owes me a favor. When business gets good, I think I'll have her answer my telephone. Thank you. 